Alrighty, mom told me it is my turn to share my opinion, so I shall do that. Hello friends, Snus here, and welcome back to another Shark Speak. It's been, ooh, been quite a bit since the last one, but here we are, nonetheless. Back again, and I am going to attempt to share my thoughts on, uh, I guess the overall arcing theme is balance. Uh, we're going to cover a few things. So as probably beaten like a dead horse by now but totem removal is happening it's happening in less than five days or less than 10 days from the time of recording this i think it happens on the 16th or 15th of november which today is the 9th uh in the background i am doing some uh, totemless grinding to try and get used to it on my hiato mainly because i'm trying to use the totems that i do have access to on my main and char and shadower characters that have uh, access to higher level areas where I feel totems would be more impactful uh, rather than a 250 meal. Either way, I guess the first point I want to make is I feel like totem removal, my own personal opinion, I don't, while I don't think it matters that much, you probably do want to hear it for god knows what reason. Uh, I don't like it. I think it's pretty easy to take that stance uh but at the same time as i've learned with the thunderbreaker nerf or nerf bug fix whatever you want to call it uh that happened i think it was last february or the february before i don't even remember anymore it's been so long of uh, it's things are gonna happen and i think i said in a pre during the thunderbreaker the future of thunderbreaker video i think i said uh paraphrasing like yeah this is gonna happen and maybe the KMS audience is used to it or whatever. But for the GMS audience, that really, really sucks. And I think my point still stands with that. It's, it just does suck for the GMS audience because we are, we have grown accustomed to it. And I think I even made a point specifically talking about uh, spawn enhancers in that video, but I don't really remember the gist of my argument there. So I'm not gonna pretend to, to uh, re-paraphrase it when I don't remember what I said, and I'm not going to take the time to watch it now, or just to make a point here. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like the points are, the totem re removal is a little more nuanced than people are making it out to be. Uh, like, there's the overarching theme being balanced, I feel like there is some credibility to be lent to the argument that, like, totems speed up progression too fast, whereas I think it is a twofold problem due to the fact that content comes out very slowly for Maple Story. Six month periods is pretty slow and the amount of content we get in those six months is rather 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 small, lackluster, especially considering that new bosses that release tend to take another six months before they're even able to be cleared due to damage gates. Uh, not necessarily due to <laughs> actual skill levels required, just due to the amount of damage that we can do to the boss uh, due to sacred force requirements or arcane force requirements in the past. Either way, I think a really good video on the topic of totem removal is Bex, Zbex video. Uh, I think that was the most best and most well-articulated video I watched on the subject. Uh, she puts it in very, very clear terms what she thinks, and uh, even if I don't agree with all of it, or do agree with all of it, I think it was such a well-made and well-constructed video that I can't help but recommend that you watch it, even if you do think totem removal is a good thing. I think it's a good a good watch because it's well edited it's funny and it's much better than the content you're going to get on this channel even though she uploads infrequently too but still still stand by that point it's it's a great video on topic of balance as well i wanted to talk about my own content creation uh i was talking about this in discord with a few of my guildies and friends but like i feel like there is a sort of responsibility that comes with content creation that i am <laughs> For lack of a better ter term, afraid of, uh, as I've witnessed with my own videos, uh, making commentary or guides or informational videos comes at the cost of if it's wrong, it can get parroted and you can be the source or root cause of it. And that is a responsibility that I am very afraid of taking on, which is why my content has slowed down dramatically. Uh, the Ice Lightning series will probably never be finished unfortunately i want to finish it don't get me wrong i have a lot recorded i finished cra 
but at the same time, uh, it's... I don't want to, like, say anything that's incorrect or wrong about the class, so I've held off on recording it. And yes, a lot of this can be avoided by just getting peer review done, but at the same time, that takes a lot of more time, too, and, like, also finding the people that want to do that for me, just to make sure the information I have in it is correct. So I'm going to probably be sticking to content that I know wholeheartedly and trust my own self to talk about, so Thunderbreaker videos are probably going to be the most, uh... <laughs> common video you're gonna see on my channel, seeing as that is my main class and that's the class I know the most about and have the most uh, insight to, along with having the most amount of reach in, and what I mean by that is like I have the most amount of context that can correct me in case I do post something wrong. I do tend to have the Thunderbreaker Discord, uh, Big Sharks, the Big, or, uh, Big Sharks review my videos before I publicly post them just in case there's something wrong or inaccurate about my videos I can have like a double check on them whereas for something like ice lightning video if I listed incorrect trinode or something I'm not necessarily going to go out of my way besides doing some brief google search to get it double checked by like an ice lightning pain because I just don't feel that's necessary but at the same time if I want to avoid that responsibility of feeling like I have a responsibility I should probably do that so it becomes this cat and mouse game almost or like this endless loop of should I get help regarding a video and the answer is almost always but at the same time I'm a very nervous fellow as you have probably easily been able to gather from this so it's hard for me to ask for help especially even when it's would do me good it's just hard it's easier to do after the fact rather than prior to the fact I guess and I guess lastly for the topic of balance is the ignition patch. It is very shortly coming upon us, so the 16th I believe is patch day, and that will bring a bunch of Thunderbreaker changes, uh, and not to mention a bunch of other Sickness Knight changes. Thunderbreakers, which I initially had high hopes for and high praise for, have realized is pretty lackluster update overall. Um, the new skill we gain, the Sonic Balls, the Bowling Balls, the Monkey Barrels are... <laughs> Very lackluster, and yes, we do gain like a 10% overall DPM increase, DPS increase, buff, whatever you want to call it, to our damage. It's still rather lackluster because Thunderbreaker's burst is still bad. Uh, it's a 30 second window now, uh, because Primal Bolt is necessary. Uh, the new Sonic Balls are cooldown reductionable only during Primal Bolt. They do not benefit from cooldown hats though, so... One of a, a cool interaction that could have been is removed because they couldn't fix their fucking code. Uh, hopefully I remember to put a gif of it here, but for those of that don't know, the Sonic Balls had a weird interaction with cooldown hats where if you had a cooldown hat, you could reduce the cooldown to uh, non-existent basically and spam those balls like crazy. And they're passive, they just came out as, as you were linking attacks, so you just spam them like crazy and get a shit ton of more damage, so like the... DPM increase was looking more like 30 to 40, I think, initially, which is disgusting amounts of damage because Thunderbreaker is not a weak class uh, in when you're talking DPM. It's just our burst suffers so greatly that uh, we end up being like a middling class to a low, low middle class because how bad our burst is. And since the game is burst centric, it makes it very difficult for us to compete. Uh, I always hate saying that, but it is the truth because, like, yeah, Thunderbreaker is a very strong DPM class, and by that, by extension, it is a decent class. But at the same time, its burst is just so pitifully weak that it makes it actually rather lackluster at the end of the day because a lot of damage is done during burst. It doesn't really matter how great you are at dealing damage off burst if you're mainly playing mechanics to avoid dying and your bosses which is how it just is i mean you can look at my black mage clear time i'm not i don't think i'm a terrible player but like that run was 54 minutes with a fucking black heart and whereas most classes with that geared are able to do it in sub 30 uh and no amount of better play will bring that clear to sub 30 i can probably bring it to a sub 40 uh i do not believe a sub 30 is possible uh, and even sub 40 is like debatable, like heavily debatable. Either way, uh, other than that, the ignition patch is, it's looking lackluster. It's, it's just like, I was excited for it when it first revealed, 
thinking it was going to be as big as like you know the Destiny Explorer revamp, and then after the fact, only seeing uh, Dawn Warrior really get the love, it or remaster touches. Uh, I was rather disappointed, especially after they nerfed the Sonic Balls to no longer be effective at cooldown reduction. I was like, there's really nothing going for this patch. Uh, especially since Sonic Balls were specifically designed to help us with our mobbing, but they are on a 10 second cooldown. Uh, for those that do not understand why that is an issue, cooldown base mob spawn is 7.5-ish seconds by default. So 10 second cooldown, ex and especially when it's not affected by Mercedes Legion or cooldown hats, means you're not spawning a ball every single spawn wave, it's every other spawn wave, which is, for lack of a better term, dog shit. Uh, I just cannot comprehend that balance change, like why they chose to make it unaffected by cooldown reduction but not lower it to like 7 second cooldown. Either way, uh, speaking of cooldown, I do want to eventually make a video on cooldown hats and like their place in Thunderbreaker's meta. This is another, I guess, balance related topic because people, we do often get a question asked like, what cooldown hat should I be aim aiming for? Should I even be aiming for a cooldown hat in the Thunderbreaker Discord? And as of right now, since we don't have hard math to really back up anything and since the ignition patch hasn't released, we've just been saying it's whatever you roll for first. If you roll minus two with 18% strength, keep. If you roll 30% strength, keep. If you roll minus four seconds, keep. If you roll minus three and 9% strength or whatever amount of strength, keep. It's just like, the math that we have seen from KMS shows that minus one second is about equivalent to minus nine percent, or uh, not minus nine, it's about equivalent to nine percent strength. So while yeah, you'll consistently hit higher numbers with more cooldown reduction um, due to the amount of torpedoes, uh, the math also changes slightly for GMS because we are fitting in more Thunderbolts and Annihilates per rotation before uh, Shark Torpedo comes off of cooldown and Lightning, uh, and Lightning God's Spear Strike comes off of cooldown. Like, uh, before those skills come off cooldown, you're getting more uh, att more basic attacks in, uh, so to speak. So we're not sure how drastically that changes the math. Considering each level of attack speed is like what? It's a 1 16th faster compared to the attack speed above it or below it, depending on how you look at it. Um, two attack speed compared to uh, zero attack speed is 1 eighth faster, if I remember correctly. And that's like the rough math because there's apparently a rounding thing, but that's like getting into the really intricate parts of Maple Story. Uh, mechanics and I don't really know how to explain it without having a full-on script in front of me because while I am okay at math my ex my ability to explain math is a whole other topic I don't think I'm very good at or well suited for that until I write out a script either way content creation it's gonna be probably rather slow uh, I would like to create content I really would but I think I have done myself a disservice and I guess my viewers are disservice uh, by falling prey to this habit or uh, mindset of things need to be perfect and not wrong. <laughs> and like, yeah, I'm a perfectionist and like that was bound to happen, but I feel like it's even more, it's even worsened. It's worsened because of my uh, sensitivity to providing misinformation and wanting to avoid that altogether. Uh, We'll see what happens. Hopefully I can get over that. I think I will when it comes to Thunderbreaker content, but regarding such content that is not Thunderbreaker or related to content that I, like, I feel like I have a lot of insight into, it's probably going to be rarer. Uh, I still have issues, of course, with like certain pieces of certain game mechanics, like you know storage bug, uh, not being able to access your storage consistently is what I mean by that. Um, also, ring swapping is still a fucking mess for certain classes if they have a summon. Uh, thanks, chickens. Phalanx squad is still fucking breaking my ability to swap. And it pisses me off uh, to no end. But that is, again, another topic. Uh, I guess you can loosely tie it into the idea of balance, but uh, I don't think there is a really an argument for balance when it functions perfectly fine in Korea, haha. <laughs> Either way, hopefully this has been somewhat entertaining and or informative to you. Uh, 
it has not been to me because if, for me it just feels awkward and out of place voicing my concerns like this. Totems are going bye bye soon enough. Again, I recommend taking out, checking out uh, Beck's video on the subject. I think she did an excellent job articulating her thoughts and probably what majority of what I wanted to say, just in a much more blunt tone than I would have been able to muster because I, again, I am self-conscious about what I say. Uh, not to say that she should be, uh, just to say that I'm not capable of voicing myself in that direct of a manner and I am uh, jealous of it, actually. Very jealous. Uh, inspired, actually. Uh, thank you to the sharks who have told me that they do like listening to these shark speaks. Uh, the viewers that have said that to me it means a lot, and is the probably the only reason this video is actually coming out is that you made a point to tell me that you miss these videos or wanted to hear them more often, wanted to hear from me more often. Because I do like creating content. It's just that I'm in my own head. Mm. 90, no, 99% of the time. I would love to say we'll create more content soon, but we both know I'd be lying. So we'll leave it at that. I'm going to get back to grinding and I hope to talk to you sharks soon.